Last week we talked about how AI would rise in power. This week, how it will affect humanity as a whole. This is what really matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. The last episode, we talked about how the history of AI will eventually, maybe one day, lead to an AI that will exceed humans in intelligence. And we kind of went into the possible end state of an AI. You know, this, this singularity and an AI that's given goals, and it, it basically wouldn't be good for humanity in the, in the scenario that we imagined this. All right, so, but, so um, for those of you who didn't see our episode last week, let's take a quick summary of what we talked about. So an AI with the ability to alter itself is going to very quickly improve its code to the point where it passes humanity. And when it does, it's going to do that very fast because it will build on itself, therefore increasing exponentially. So that will lead to an AI that is so smart, we don't really know what it's going to do. And whatever its goal is, is going to affect humanity greatly in the end. So what I wanted to say was we came up with one bad situation, and because of our time constraints, we didn't really go into the nuts and bolts or really the specifics on what an AI-guided future might look like. Yeah. And of course, we did say that AI will be impossible to predict because it's more intelligent than ourselves. But there are some future alternatives that are promising. We can Uh, can look at the general picture of what a future will look like with a, a big AI sort of governing over everything. But we can't tell what it's going to do because, again, it's like an ant figuring out what a person is going to do. It may have a very general idea, but it's not going to know the specifics. So first of all, to obje- to respond to some objections that might have been raised in the last episode, some people say, well, why don't you just use Asimov's laws of robotics in order to control these artificial intelligences? Yeah. But the thing is, it, it, those laws didn't even work in the books. Yeah, I, okay. I don't think a lot of people understand. They're from books. Like... He's an author. Right. No, he's not making any specific recommendation that this is this should be the state of AI in the future. But I guess specifically, and for anyone who doesn't know out there, the Asimov's laws of, of robotics are simply three elements of fiction in Asimov's books. He says this is how we should control AIs in the future. And he, he, he writes them in the book as, as this. So the first law is that they can't harm any humans. Right. The second law is that they have to listen to everything that humans say. And the third law is that they can't harm each other. Did I did I get that right? I think so. I could look it up, but that's going to take a little bit too much time. So we'll just go with it. So basically, the whole point of the laws is that the AIs always listen to the first law first. And then if they're obeying it, then they listen to the second law. If they're obeying that one, then they look at the third one. But the problem is that these these laws are not exactly as far-reaching as you might think. For example, how would you define harming a human? If an AI is given a goal, for example, to minimize the number of human deaths in the world, it will it will search every avenue to try to minimize these deaths. So, yeah. for example, it, it would look at car crashes, and it would notice that, well, a lot of people die from car crashes every year. The best way to minimize those deaths is just to ban all cars. If you ban all cars, people will no longer die in them. And if you just give an AI the goal of preventing harm from humans then they're going to say, whoa, 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 the world looks really dangerous right now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take every human, a great idea, I'm going to take every human, I'm going to put them in a little room of their own, I'm going to climate control it, I'm going to control everything in that room, I'm going to give them food, I'm going to give them water, and then they'll be good. They won't need anything else. Aha, I solved it all, you know? And they won't even know what to take seriously as a minor offense against humans or a major offense. For example, you might you might offend someone through your speech, and then the AI might see that as a logical reason to censor you. Because yeah. you are hurting someone else in some in some physical aspect. You're hurting them emotionally. And then the, you, you get into the problem of, well, what about when humans are hurting each other? Who's, who's in the right there? W- what if there's a big uh, tyrannical government and then there's an uprising against them and there's violence against the people in the tyrannical government? Who, who is the AI going to side with? Or if you're hurting someone by proxy, for example, what if the AI releases a disease that kills people? Yeah. Is that the AI harming people or is it just the disease that's killing people? <laughs> it's a real, it's a real slippery slope. And I hate to say that, but it is. It's, it's, a, it's a dilemma. I, I mean, it's not, it's not really a slippery slope, okay. I would say. Fair, fair enough. But it's, it's a tough problem. It's not something that can be solved overnight. A big way I've heard people, not a big way, a big idea I've heard being tossed around is that, okay, of course, if you set an AI off, right, 
you're not 100% sure that it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, it's going to be catastrophic. So, the idea is the first thing you work towards is something called a guardian AI. And this is an AI that its goal is to prevent other AIs from hurting humanity. And of course, that comes with the same set of problems, but the idea is it's better to work towards a guardian AI that will help us, and if we succeed in that, then we'll be good on AI. Yeah, see, I'm not so sure, though, because I feel like a guardian AI is just another way of creating the paperclip maximizer, like we talked about last episode. Well, well, the fact of the matter is, someone's going to create the paperclip maximizer. Like, there's no way to stop humans from trying to use AI to increase productivity, and that's going to lead something to something like the paperclip maximizer, which will turn the entire universe into paperclips, because that's just how it works. Sure, but the Guardian just... AI, it seems like it would just have the same problem that, that the paperclip maximizer would have. If you're giving it a goal in the first place, then it's going to take that goal literally. For example, if you if its goal is to save humanity from AI, it might just say well, let's just not have any AI at all, and then it would kill itself or something like that. Yeah. I, I mean, there's the, the problem is, is you might say, yes, we will have a guardian AI that will protect us, but the problem is creating a guardian AI is just as difficult as dealing with the problem in the first place. Well, that's, that's why I think it's important to work towards a guardian AI, because you, you, you'll have about the same rate of failure no matter what AI you're trying to make. If you're trying to make an AI that's going to solve poverty, it could solve poverty by killing every hu- every person in poverty if if you don't give it the proper goals. So in my mind, it just makes sense to work towards an AI that's going to, if it works, is going to protect us from other ano- uh, uh, anomalous AI. Like if if an AI, if the paperclip AI starts rising up. Uh, that guardian AI will be able to look at it and think on its level and say, okay, this guy's going to some crazy places. We have to shut that down. And if it doesn't work, then you've lost nothing because you would have had the paperclip AI anyway, and that would have, and you're you're back to square one. Yeah, I actually, I I think you're right. You are bringing up some good points. And what you're talking about is the creation of something called friendly AI. Now, friendly AI is 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 just a study of some possible AIs that we can create that would align with human values. Now, it's kind of hard to talk about the study of friendly AI because it's kind of like talking about a study of which we, something we haven't mentioned at all. Throughout the history of AI, we haven't gotten close to anything that could be considered rogue. Yeah, the, the rogue rogue AIs. I mean, let, let's face it, rogue AIs would be the end of human civilization. Here's here's how I like to think about it. Let's say humanity is just one person walking on a path, and on one end is is just total utopia, you know, humanity is, is great, everything is amazing, there's no problems. On the other end is total destruction of humanity, humanity goes extinct, it's it for us. I like to think, at the beginning of humanity, we were walking along a pretty broad path, you can meander basically wherever you want, and you're not getting too close to either one of those. But as technology progressed, the path started getting narrower and narrower, and we started walking and we would meander towards destruction or towards utopia. But, you know, we're st- there's still a broad path, so we but don't as, really need to worry about it. as technology gets developed, though, the, the path gets slowly wider and wider until there's no, no, no choice. Narrower, we, or, narrower sorry, and narrower. Yes, it gets narrower and narrower until there's no choice. You must yeah. fall in either direction. Yeah, basically, how I like to think of it is once, you, once AI is invented, the path narrows to a tightrope. And you're either going to fall into the utopia or you're going to go totally dystopian and there is no in between. And of course I liken this I liken this whole idea of, of talking about future AI to some study that we hadn't that we haven't even seen yet. It's kind of like studying astrobiology, you know, the existence of extraterrestrial beings. How can you study something which hasn't even happened yet? So of of course a lot of this is just speculation. But I, I think we've been we've been emphasizing a lot of the things that can go wrong with AI. But as with last episode, we left it off with saying that AIs can do wonderful things, you know, cure poverty, cure disease. And I think we should go into the nuts and bolts, the specifics of what's what AI can actually do, the the possibilities. And I think a good way to a good way to start it off is just talking about mind uploading, a technology that we referenced in our first episode, but we didn't we didn't actually get into. So in the first episode, we talked about how humans can improve themselves uh, on an external level with technology. But genetic engineering will represent the first leap it'll represent the first internal leap. It'll mean humans are getting better from the inside. Yeah. But 
mind uploading takes the takes this to the extreme. It ditches biology as as a medium for minds to exist. Right. And it says that in the future we'll just be on machines. So the the idea of mind uploading similar to genetic engineering in genetic engineering you you can edit you can sort of edit your mind a little bit you can say oh we'll have a larger brain mass here or here and less here or have it more condensed or something like that but if you uploaded your mind to a computer or to a server then all of a sudden you have the ability to just edit your mind entirely and you can do all sorts of crazy things as long as you understand what you're editing and Even if you don't understand what you're editing, oh, yeah. you could you still could, do it. You know, you could delete system 32 of the mind, and then just your mind would shut down. I don't know. Well, it'd be equivalent to just removing a portion of your brain. Yeah. But even imagining it like... A brain scoop. <laughs> right, a brain scoop. Even imagining it like that, though, is not really taking it to its full extent. Because evolution, as we've talked about a lot on this show, is is a gradual change over time. And even in genetic engineering, you're only changing one or two things about the organism in any specific area. With mind uploading, you can completely rewrite the structure and the way that our brains even function, and it would yeah. it would turn you into something completely different. It... Uh, well, while we're on the topic of mind uploading, I want to talk about there's some uh, philosophical problems with mind uploading. The first and foremost of is mind uploading is often touted as a way that humans can become immortal, that we can live on forever. But people have pointed out that mind uploading is basically just copying your mind to a computer. Think about it this way. If you um, destroy someone's mind as you go along and scan it and it goes into a computer, most people would make the logical assumption, oh, they're being put into the computer. But if you have the exact same process that just doesn't destroy the brain, suddenly you have someone on the external world and someone on the computer. All that you've done is split the person into two entities. Now there's one person who's the physical person still walking around, and then you have the person who's uploaded into the mind. And of course, this is similar to, if you've heard of it, it's the it's the transporter paradox. So in Star Trek, they were transported, their entire body was deleted, and then they would appear somewhere else. And in the show, they just meant this, oh, they're just transporting. But you really don't know whether it's yourself arriving at the other end or whether it's just a copy of you with the same memories and same everything. A, a good a good way to think about this is let's picture a world where teleportation has been invented. You can go from Seattle to Mars instantly. You can go from Mars to, uh, to Venus and then from Venus to L.A. You know, <laughs> one day... You go into the teleporter, right? And they scan, they scan you. They're like, okay, we're ready for teleportation. But this time, the thing that destroys your cells doesn't work. Only the thing that scans your cells and replicates them over on Mars. You, and you are inside the thing going, oh, my, it didn't work. We have to do this again. And the people who are working the teleporter say, oh, no, 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 no. It's fine. Your guy is over on Mars, but you're still here, so we're going to have to kill you. And of course, you wouldn't believe that at all, because you're right there, and yeah. you're the one being killed. You'd recognize that. And, and you wouldn't want to be killed. You would say, whoa, hang on, I'm still here. This is me. And they'd say, no, you're on Mars. This is just a different you. If we kill you, you won't even know you're on Mars. And then they start dragging you away to kill you. Would you think that's okay? No. But that's what, you're, that's what you would be doing every time you teleport. Or every time you mind upload. Yeah. So what does this have to do with artificial intelligence? I, I think we may, might need to make the bridge right now. Yeah. So basically, artificial intelligence will allow us the creation of these wonderful technologies. You know, I mean, wonderful or horrible, depending yeah. on your point of view. But because artificial intelligence will create an intelligence more... It'll be better than humans. So anything that humans can create or even conceive creating yeah. would be created by these artificial superintelligences. Basically, so this would end up being possible. Yeah, basically, it's not just science fiction. Yeah, the, these super intelligences would have the mental capacities to solve a lot of scientific problems that we can't think through right now. They would probably be able to find a general equation for physics if it exists. They would be able to solve poverty. I mean, that's a si that's a simple thing for a super intelligence. Right, you said that last episode. I, I said that last episode, but. It's it's just insane what these hyper intelligent uh, things can do. There's no limit, basically. I mean, think about the paperclip AI. Y you would imagine it would be able to expand as far as it was possible to expand because it's just a perfect 
machine for making paper clips. It, and picture that power now on the side of humanity. We could become a trans galactic organization of humans if we just managed to make an AI that was good. I think we'll get to transgalactic later, but maybe I'm jump <laughs> maybe I'm jumping around, but I want to go back into the mind uploading okay. and address one of the points we made. Well, I guess you more more you kind of more made the point. Okay. But one of the things is uh, a lot of people see mind uploading as just okay, a computer copies your brain and then uploads it, you know, it basically sends the data to some server. But a lot of people don't see it that way, and they see it as an actual attempt to be immortal. And so the way this would work is that you get something called nanotechnology. Now, right. nanotechnology is just, you know, very small technology. And you, you inject it inside your bloodstream or, or something like this. And the whole concept is that each of your neurons, one by one, would get replaced by an artificial neuron in, uh, in your brain. Yeah, okay. W to put this in a, in a perspective that um, people will understand, or at least people who don't follow these sort of sciences, picture, this is a common analogy. I forget what it's called. It's about the boat that gets replaced. Thes ship of Theus. Yeah. Theseus. Ship right. of Theseus. Right, that's um, it. Theseus' ship, you've probably heard of it, where if you take a ship and then it gets destroyed and you place it with an exact copy of that ship, is it still the same ship? Most people would say no. Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah, right. But then, what if you take that same ship, Theseus's ship, and you replace it one plank at a time, so that the ship has become, essentially, none of the parts are the same as the old ship. It's an entirely new ship. Is that still Theseus's original vessel? And a lot of people say, well, no, it isn't. Or they, they say yes, and they just say, okay, it's the same ship since it only got replaced slowly. Here's, here's the way I like to think about it. What kills someone, what stops their consciousness, is a stop and then a start. You'll notice that usually, when you're living, you have a constant thread of life. You are conscious or subconscious for the entirety of your existence. But then, if someone cuts that subconscious or conscious thought and then starts it up again, that's just a new life. That isn't you. The idea... So with... you think people then that got back from... Uh near-death experiences do you think they're a new person i don't know that's that's the we can talk about the philosophical implications of that in a different episode but that's how that's just how i like to think about it so the the way that replacing your neurons would work is, is you would become theseus's ship where it's very hard to tell the line between old you and new you that way you keep a thread of consciousness going and then when you upload you probably won't care at that point because you're essentially data anyway, and when you move that data, even if you die, it's a lot more tricky there. Well, I, I think this opens up more opportunities for philosophical questions than it might appear at first, because Theseus's ship is not just a, a question about the definition of ships, you know, like the definition of whether something is the same ship or not. No. It's, an it's an analogy for consciousness. And the important part is uh, about ship of Theseus is that how quickly does the ship's planks yeah. need to be replaced in order for it to still be considered the same ship? If you... Also, uh, also if you if you keep to the analogy that it's a it's that it's also a human brain, you know, like mm -hmm. are you the same consciousness that you were as a child, right? Because all of the atoms in your brain have been recycled by your cells. So if you didn't believe that the ship, the ship of Theseus is, uh, Theseus was the same ship as it was years ago then how could you reasonably believe that you're the same person that you were years ago? So in some sense, you either have to accept that you you died, like your earlier childhood yeah. self died, and this is just a new you who's been living for a few years, or maybe even a few months, or if, maybe even since this morning. Yeah. Right, you could, have, you could have, last night you could have died and then woken up with all the same memories. You know, th there's so many philosophical questions attached to this simple maneuver. That it's, it's hard to really decide one way or another. I agree. But we're starting to get into some complex philosophy, and we're getting away from our original point. I think we should do an episode on this, though. Um, let, let's continue this in another episode. Let's get back to how this all connects to AI. Artificial intelligence. Yeah, artificial intelligence. We've been talking about mind uploading. We've been talking about the, the philosophical implications of mind uploading, the philosophical implications of basically all of this combined together. I think this all ties back to a big question. Some people would think it's moral to mind upload. Some people would think it isn't moral because you're killing people. Some people would say it's moral to create an AI that eventually could either destroy humanity or cure all of our problems because potentially all of our problems could be cured. 
But someone else would say it's not moral to create AI because it's entirely possible that the AI could destroy all of humanity and it's better to live with these problems than to have a potential solution or a potential catastrophe. And it all comes back to the question, should AIs even be allowed to be developed? And should mind uploading be allowed to be developed? Should you try as hard as you can to hold back the technologies as long as possible or should you try to speed them up? And really, I think these should be more controversial questions than, than sometimes people make it out to seem. Because controversial questions like abortion and, uh, and climate change are very contentious issues at the moment. Yeah. But it seems like people only talk about things in which the future seems known. And e even, even with climate change, the future doesn't seem known. But it's, it's still an issue that people talk about because yeah. the scientists can make models of what's going yeah. to happen and then a whole different side entirely just disregards the models. Well, I mean, I think we can agree. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to wrestle any jimmies, but I think we can agree that the scientific consensus is that climate change is at least happening. Yes, I would. I, well, of course. Yes, yeah, so that's the scientific <laughs> consensus. But I think that's that's taking away from the point. Yeah. My point is simply that society is great. Well, it's not even great. It's it just it deals with problems that seem apparent, that seem like we have known information about the known future, whereas the problems we're dealing with are unknowns. But simply because they're they're dealing with an unknown, does not make them less valuable, uh, va valuable or less noble of a goal yeah. or less noble of a problem in, to solve. In fact, I hope we've convinced you that this problem of AI, it's not a problem like abortion, where I, I mean, let's face it, if society went either way, it wouldn't really destroy or save humanity but an ai that's if you develop an ai smart enough to be exponentially smarter than any human you've created an end goal for humanity suddenly that's it we're talking about the final accomplishment of humankind and whether that would destroy us or whether it would save us right like wealth inequality shout back to episode two <laughs> yeah. as bad as we think that problem is it still means nothing uh, in terms of the end of humanity history yeah. would still continue whereas this ai problem it literally means the difference between humanity and no humanity so people should be talking about it but for some reason we like to talk about problems that are apparent and obvious and happening right now we don't like to talk about problems that are in the future, problems that may not be very important now, like, psh, who cares? We might create an AI that's as smart as a rat. Who cares about that? But in the future, that AI could self-improve itself beyond humans and destroy all of us or bring us to utopia. And I, I want to bring in one more important thing, because I said we'd get into galactic empires later. So I want to bring up one point. This would enable us the key to creating something, something of science fiction. If we can create artificial intelligence, it will allow us to conquer the galaxy in quite a literal way. Mm -hmm. On one side, you have something that can literally conquer galaxies, and on the other side, you have the complete destruction of humanity. It deserves a conversation. Yeah. Let's, I, let's be honest. I think we can all agree that something that's going to lead us to even, you know, Star Trek and beyond levels of just universal presence... We've got to be having a conversation. And that, and that's in contrast to the fact that most politicians don't say a thing about it. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've ever heard a politician talk about mind uploading or AI because it all seems... It would turn people off. Yeah, it seems so far out there, but it's not that far away. I think most AI experts would agree that it's going to happen within the next 100 years. Well, we said in last episode yeah. that they kind of disagreed with each other. And, and but there, the is, there are median estimates. Yeah. Like, I, I think one of the studies found that among AI scientists that believed it would happen, the median estimate was 2060. Yeah, and Google's head of engineering believes it's going to happen strongly by uh, 2045. 2045. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we've convinced you to at least think about it. Yeah, think about it when you're driving home today or while you're doing the dishes or, or yeah. shopping at the supermarket. Realize that humanity could be changed forever by one simple thing. Think about it while you're going home because it's what really matters. With Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. Right. Goodbye. See you next week.